Hey guys, all the way with Alloway here at Sundance 2014 with the writer-director Kat Kamler of Hellion. So I saw the short film at the DGA Texas Filmmakers Night this summer, and my first question was, where did this story start? Okay. Um, so, oh, wait, hold on, okay. Um, so uh, it was a story that my Uncle Frank would always tell at family gatherings about how he and my two other uncles, when they were little, set fire to my grandfather's Jeep. And how, in the aftermath of when my grandfather came home and punished these boys and dealt with these wild kids. And after we shot the short in 2011, I really wanted to live in this world much longer and um, hang out with these characters and kind of figure out where they came from and how they kind of got to this place of hell raising. Um, and someone mentioned that they thought that this world lived in Port Arthur, Port Natchez, where my producer Kelly Williams is from and so he started taking me down there for these long trips to just kind of research and meet people and um, sit in coffee shops and sit in restaurants and barber shops and I just started the wheels in my head the little story wheels just started racing like mad and just kind of expanded everything from there. Now sitting in a coffee shop or in a barber shop what were what were some of the specific things that you saw that maybe you used in the film? Oh I love it yeah um so the barber shop, it's Blaine's barber shop, which is where Kelly's dad gets his hair cut like every other week and has been going to Blaine for I don't even know how long. And Kelly's dad, Wayman, and I would just sit there and the refinery workers were coming in and out and getting their hair cut and you would just listen to the conversations that they would have about so-and-so is going offshore for so long and how the wife's going to deal with it and the kids and all of these little kind of nuance um, details that you know I would never in a million years be able to make up on my own so I would just I would have my little like composition book and be scribbling furiously like conversations and how phrases and stories and those things find their way into the script and hopefully make it rich and detailed now to get a film like this made especially given you're a Texas filmmaker and um, there's such a collaborative process that exists especially in that community what was assembling the team like like who were key members to get this thing together um, well producers for one Kelly Williams and I did the short together in 2012 so him and I are like attached at the hip probably forever and then John Duffy our other producer Kelly had worked with on a film called Pit Stop that was here last year Yantan so Yantan and I go back well over a decade um, but a lot of so I teach at UT at the University of Texas and on the short film I would say I had probably about half of the crew were old students who were just like rock stars and who you know once you find them you want to keep them and so with the feature Probably half of our crew were old students or recent grads or like my intern Maddie who um, has been with me for two semesters and like you want to go and take a few weeks off of your I think sophomore year of college and come work on the movie and she's like hell yes <laughs> she's here and she's here right now skipping classes again but um, and then people like Brett Pollock who is our cinematographer it's it's a lot of people you know like when we were reaching out for a DP like we knew folks from short term 12 and so that's how he came to the project um, and it's always first and foremost like are they nice are they cool are we gonna be friends with them and if they are then um, then we bring them on board like bring on talented badass sweet kind people well, it's a small community. It's funny you bring up Short Turn 12 because I ran into Destin on the street before this and I was like, I'm on the way to interview Kat. And he was like, <laughs> awesome. Um, but that's crazy. That's the way it works. Um, so how did you get Aaron, Paul, and Juliet Lewis on board? Was it the script? Did you sit down and like have to convince them? How, what was that like? So Aaron, we sent the script through his agency and then I also sent it through James Ponzold who directed Smash who I met here at Sundance. Yeah, good solid sweet human being and um, so it kind of came at him from a few different places and uh, read the script he got in touch and wanted to meet and responded to it and so I went up to Macon Georgia where he was shooting Need for Speed and we sat down in a upstairs pub and had milkshakes and got to know each other and I think as I was leaving we're like let's do this let's make this together and Juliet kind of similar thing like her folks reached out to us having responded to the script and we sat down over omelets in a cafe in LA and bonded over music and childhoods and all of that kind of stuff and um, she was on board ex just excited about the project and the script and um, and they're both they've both been like a dream 
to work with. They're just solid, sweet people. It was hilarious at the Q&A hearing all the boys who are absolutely incredible. Um, Josh Wiggins, who's the lead in the film, saying that, oh, uh, you know, casting director found me on YouTube. And then another kid being like, I read the script through my agent, you know, and I really <laughs> thought it was great. You know, they're so different. Um, so tell me about the process of finding these kids. And did they walk in the room and you just sort of knew that that was, you know, the one? Yeah. Um, so casting is probably one of my favorite parts of the process and I knew I wanted these boys to be as real and authentic as you can possibly get and so I started I kind of took the tree of life like Terrence Malick route we were working with the same local casting director and uh, we just started scouring every small town in Texas and went to a bunch of motocross races and interviewed all these motocross kids and each one of the kids like the Dalton Sutton who came from Port Natchez in our very very first casting session found him he'd never acted before Cameron Owens who plays um, uh, Roger came from a motocross race my very first motocross race I went to and uh, Dylan the kid who auditioned like as soon as he walked in I'm like ah oh, this kid's awesome yeah. like he's like curly little red hair and like scrappy and then Josh uh, yeah a friend of ours um, basically kind of discovered him on YouTube and was like, you got to check out this kid. He's really special. And sure enough, he walked in the room and like sold. Well, your role as a director on set, especially in a film like this, where, you know, you're having kids go to emotionally dangerous places as well as physically. I mean, there's fire, there's like smashing a truck with a baseball bat. So tell me about how you became sort of, you know, more than a director, maybe a caretaker in a sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's, I think, Again, it's important that people you the, you bring on to crew and to cast, knowing that because I work I work with kids a lot, and knowing that you're gonna have this group of five boys from age ten to age fifteen working. You're just trying to find people who are good, kind-hearted people that are gonna also take care of these boys. And you want to create an environment because again, many of them came to this as their first project, and you want them to leave this film with excitement, enthusiasm, and like I love making movies. So you're trying to create that world, that kind of safe space with them. And so with like stunts and stuff, we had special effects guys and stunt coordinators who like were being insanely safe with them. Um, emotionally, emotionally, you're, you're um, I mean, Josh is, he's just so instinctual. And so he just knows, yeah, it's just, he's got it, whatever it is, he's got it. So with the emotional places, um, you know, just kind of talking through where you're coming from into this moment and then really giving him space to, like, kind of get there, like, get his mindset there. Um, but, yeah, they he's just, all of those kids are just so real and normal, and I, I just want to hang out with them all the time. <laughs> well, you know... It's interesting you're talking about how wonderful they are, but in the film, they're little <laughs> devils. And, you know, there's a sense of anger that you're like, where is this coming from? And you've said that, you know, you're really fascinated with why the youth in America are becoming angrier. Um, so why is that, do you think? You know, when we were doing casting, we were talking to a lot of kids and kind of getting to know them, and you hear these stories about broken homes and... Um, just upset family lives and it's just it's such a hard age to deal with these things that are they're much bigger and more adult than they are and I think it you know some of them just don't know how to kind of filter those feelings and those emotions and they come out in um, unfortunate and destructive ways and it's like these kids are they're good kids you know they're really good kids and they just want to be heard and they just want someone to listen to them and um, pay attention to them sometimes and when people don't it it comes out in, in unfortunate ways well it's with this film you as a director and a filmmaker sort of giving them a voice um, I feel like because uh, you said you love Lord of the Flies and you're very fascinated with good kids doing bad things and in this movie it seems to be that it's more than just an alcoholic dad and the loss of a mom you know what's more at play here um, I mean, I think at, that at the heart of it, it's like, I'm fortunate to have both my parents, but I, even at my age, the loss of either of the two of them, I don't know what I would do. And at that age, like, it's so confusing and it's just, 
I had I had major abandonment issues when I was a kid, and it was probably some of the most tragic times in my life. Of like, is my mom gonna come home today? You know? Oh God, yeah. I mean, I feel like everybody can kind of hopefully relate to this um, losing someone or losing or some kind of tragedy in your life, um, and how you kind of grapple with that. Well, the film is absolutely wonderful, and I look forward to all your future work, so thank you. <laughs> thank you <so> much. <laughs> yeah.